The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this 30th day of December, just about to wrap up the year. And the Dow is down 28 points at 17,692 after being down about 60 points earlier. The S&P is down 484 at 2,073. The Comp Index is down 14 at 5,093. This is very interesting. You've got the VIX up a little, up 0.82, up 5% at 16.90. We're going to see where that closes today. Uh, <clears throat> you've got the E-minis that I'm showing you right here, minus 650. This is leg B. I, at this point, I still have no choice but to call it with an up arrow, a potential new buy mode that should go to at least a leg D. I don't see anything yet to say that it's not going to do that. There's the weekly chart circled it just to show there's a possible body forming here. And the 120-minute chart made a peak. Ian, we've had a pretty sharp pullback from 2075. I say pretty sharp in the context of, <clears throat> in the context of where we were at the close yesterday, down to 2061, so it's 14 points. Um, what can I say? Um, when, you, when you're looking at this 120-minute chart, the most important thing about it is that it made a left side, right side price, almost a left side, right side price time match um, from the 2072.25 high back in the 17th of December down to the 1991 low on the 18th. Very sharp move down, made a kind of a cup, and now it's a sort of a, a handle ish pattern. Um, so I think we can chop around for the next day, the day or so. Um, between 2075 is the high we could maybe go to the higher 20, 2081 let's say um, and 2060 was the low maybe we go down sorry 2061 was the low maybe we can go down to the two, 2055 area um, so this is very important at this particular point we're looking at a market remember one of the things that I've been discussing for months now is that when the, October, the September October uh, decline is met with buying and there's a really strong rebound, very often that year you see prices close on the 31st of December close to or at or slightly higher than the high for the year, previous high for the year. So I don't think we can get to 18,351. That's a lot of points, 700, 800 points to the upside between now and tomorrow. But that's really not the point. The real point is, oh, I haven't finished the story of this. I got to the E-minis. And I'll tell you the real story because I'm, I'm liable to go to about seven different things before I remember. If I do remember this chart right here, you remember what I was looking at? Every day I show my subscribers to my opening calls. The reason why we've been long and, and, and quite heavily long, actually, I'm quite surprised um, in the number of positions we have, is that the down channel from May to July to August um, saw the, the price trapped in a, in a trading range that saw like a yo-yo bounce between the low, like a ping pong ball in, in, in a tube. And it went from the low to the high, to the low to the high, and kept doing that until it broke down and you smashed down to the 15,370 low of August 24th. In this particular instance, what we're looking at is bing, bang, bing, bang, bing, bang. We're bouncing around. We got right to the door, right to that resistance line. To be, to be absolutely strict about it, the resistance line is where? In the Dow, the resistance line is right here. In the E-mini, it would be at 290. And we were at 265. That's a lot of points to go, 25 points. In the Dow, it's INDU. It's this trend line roundabout here. I say roundabout because it's moving every day. So I would say a clearing 17,790s in the next uh, couple of days would start to pierce that resistance. At this point, 
it's it's treated it's treated as resistance. MACD is has crossed positively. That's good. Stochastics rallying us to 69 percent. That's good. It's not great, but it's good. And the weekly chart is still quite positive. And we've gone to a PT, as I said, in the 120 minute chart. Now let's go on with our story. So I want you to put that into context where we are why my what my reasoning is why my reasoning was that we would have a rally and that we positioned ourselves for a rally into the end of the year and then we have to make decisions and this particular and so far the decision is, is that if we do pierce and go into these 17,900s especially the 18,000 yeah the 18,000s by the first week or two of January rather than plummeting below the 17,400 17,200 cushion in the Dow I would say that that's, that's a big positive. All right, let's get back to our story. And what we're looking at here is gold. No, I will do the IWM because we look at that as a lag and it's in leg C. Not a great move, but it is rallying. Uh, not today, it's down 35 cents at 114.85. It has been rallying. And the QQQ has been the leader in terms of the chart formation in the weekly. And the daily's really been struggling. And it's at 113.81, down 49 cents. 112.90 is key support on the short term. 111 on, on the more intermediate term. Now, it's still the shorter term, talking weeks rather than months. And on the, on the upside, a break into the 115s will be really positive. Okay. Okay. Now the RTH. Remember, we spoke about the RTH holding very well, only down 13 cents and 78.85. This is going to be very important. The next, we I would make it real simple. A close one and a half points above the 78.85 high is like a breakout for the RTH, uh, a breakout in the daily. Weekly says you've still got that very strong resistance that comes in at about 80. Yeah, 81. Yeah. So so a break. One and a half points higher would take you to the 80.60s at 80.70 or higher. That's going to be very positive, and that's the area you've got to watch out because that's where you can get a reversal. Coming back down, a break one and a half points lower to about, the, let's call it the 77 uh, area. It says watch out because you've got 76.65. This is the retail index, very important. The market vector retail ETF. <clears throat> that means the 200 period moving average that most fin uh, most financial managers and and um, uh, money managers look at. But we look at the uh, moving average 200 period exponential moving average at 75.61, and there's a huge island reversal to the upside. So so far, still quite positive there. Now we can go to gold. Gold at this particular point is um, down 7.30. I see nothing. I've been God, like a broken record. I feel embarrassed. I, I just see nothing in gold. I see maybe bounces, but I don't see anything substantial that really says there's a big move coming to the upside in gold. Not yet. Okay? Just I, I don't see it. Not until, this will make it real clear. Just as I use the VIX, the volatility index, uh, the parameters there that I give my subscribers every day, in the Dow, I uh, mean the dollar, if the dollar takes out at 78.37 right now, 27 cents. If the dollar takes out 76 support, 76, 96 support, there's another story entirely. I will become quite enthusiastic about gold because that would be that would be really the first opportunity to have a not a bounce, but a rally that goes for six weeks or so. And up until then, I'm gonna have to say I'm just standing aside there. And I'm not doing much with gold uh, dollar either. Um, now, let's see. All right, so we've got that. I wanted to also look at um, TLT. Now, TLT took a dive yesterday, following through today, down 24 cents at 119.92. I told you that I'm looking, I think it's going to be taken out if the market goes higher. I think you're going to be seeing this red dash uh, uptrend line at 119.41 taken out. I think we're going to test the low of 118 round number from the 13th of November. And if that's taken out, 116.44 is the 200 period exponential moving average, and 114.88 will be the next one. But I still think that yields are in a trading band. <clears throat> All right. So now let's go on to high grade copper. Uh, high grade copper at this point is uh, unchanged, uh, 2.13. Um, oh, it made a, a peak E. Um, all right, we're going to be watching the. Uh, 
High-grade copper is very important, but less important than it ever used to be. It used to be a major, uh, a key, in, uh, really a, a barometer of international building. Um, just basically, you look at copper and you say, ha, ah, copper's going higher, people must be buying copper because they're building. Now what we're looking at is that copper's had its day in the sun, and we're just watching it as it meanders in this trading band. And I think it's stuck in the trading band for now. But the weekly chart is saying, hey, not bad action, but nothing yet substantial, and that monthly needs to be watched real closely. What am I missing? Crude oil? <clears throat> yep, crude oil. Nothing, nothing, nothing to see here, folks. Move along. UNG, um, nice, nice spike. I mean, from six, what is it, 680? From 691 to yesterday's high of 887. Oh, I think we're looking at 32% or more, right? Um, that's a big move. We'll see how it pulls back. Because if it pulls back and breaks under 750, it's all done. That was that was it. I think that actually what's going to happen is it's going to go into a trading man and UNG, Natural Gas uh, Fund, United States Natural Gas Fund, trading at 8.23, down 41 cents. I think it will then go into, I'll draw it in, the H pattern that goes to an M pattern. Actually, I'm going to make it a little higher. I think it could actually go to the nines. If, it, if it's able to take out 8.87 high from the 29th, uh, it was yesterday, right? Then I think it's going to go higher. And I'll put that in here. Up into the, up near the 10 area. I'm not sure this is the move that goes to 10, but if it holds the basic support in the uh, sevens and then rallies, the next one will be the one that goes higher. So a small arch and then a bigger arch is what I'm expecting. All right. So short squeeze natural gas, thank you. Yep, I, I can't I can't disagree with that. Um, uh, I want to do one thing that I completely forgot about. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we've been speaking about Apple and we're speaking about Disney. Apple is just it looks like natural gas. The Apple right now is having a rally that's it's really struggling. I don't see anything for Apple at this time. And the H pattern suggests to me that a, a close under 105. It's going to really take it very quickly down to the 103, 99 area, somewhere between the, those two numbers. And I think upside is very limited, maybe maximum if there's a just a sudden burst of energy. You've got 111 to 112, and then it makes the H pattern again. That's just, I think that's what I'm looking at. Uh, the other one was Disney. I had questions about Disney. Yeah, Disney's down today, 26 cents at 106.82. I think it's also in, in an H pattern, but I must say for anyone who's, short Disney or looking to short Disney, it's really important that by Tuesday, the beginning of next week, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, that you're looking at Disney down in the 105 or lower area. I'll tell you why. If Disney is able to break above 108.20, then you really have to wait to short it. You have to wait for this bounce to complete. You have 109.58 is the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly, and, and they are making Boodles of boodle. Um, and, and I intend to see the Star Wars. I hope I can take my grandchildren. It should be fun. Um, I think everyone will want to see it. So I think they've got themselves a residual here. It's the other businesses that could be costing them. How will Star Wars help them? I don't know. All I'm saying is that the chart doesn't look very good because it could be a deeper, a stronger balance if it takes out the, the high of three days ago. Basil Chapman, Dow's Down 41. I'll be right back. It's true. Life is all about choices. At EverBank, they're making it easy for you to make a smart one with this special cash offer. Open a new yield pledge money market account with funds from another financial institution or deposit new funds into an existing yield pledge money market account and you could earn up to a $500 cash reward. And if you're opening a new account, you'll also get their new higher six-month bonus interest rate along with their yield pledge promise that ensures your yield will always be in the top 5% of competitive accounts at banks nationwide. Open a new account or add to one. It's your choice. To qualify, you must meet balance and other limited time offer requirements. Go to everbank.com forward slash TFNN for details and deposit options or speak with one of their banking specialists at 1-855-750-4051 for more information. You must act by December 31st, 2015 to be eligible. Everbank is a member FDIC. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman Dow's down 34. SB's down 5. And just for those of you who are trading, this is what I've got for the, um, for the uh, e mini, the 10 minute. Uh, yesterday, just before near the close, I had uh, sent this out. To say we were somewhere over the four o'clock, we were somewhere over there, and I'd say that uh, I'd got a peak D in the uh, hundred uh, in the ten-minute chart. And there should be a price movement to the si sideways movement to down, and in fact, what happened is we did go sideways, slid a little bit down, then had one spike to twenty-five cents, or, uh, yeah, twenty-five cents high, I think, to twenty seventy-five high. That was peak E, and then we started the, uh, that move down, and that move was a very nice during the evening. It was like a parallel two arch uh, formations, and um, it then went trough A, trough B, trough C, and I had drawn in right here, the left side, right side, and I call this a Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart. Is what what I noted. Um, when I sent this out before the close yesterday. It's a, it's, it's a little complicated. I don't want to spend time on it other than to say that after you get to a D, um, if there is a move that takes it slightly down to the trough of D, and that's a hint that afterwards you're going to get a whole series of, of pullbacks and eventually it will break the left side low. And that was at 264. And this was a measured move. And I went right to, the, let me just check this, right to there, uh, right to uh, 10 minutes past 10. And the objective was to get to two, 2064. 
It got there just a little before that, had a bounce, and then broke down. The low today so far is 2061.25. Uh, now we're in two of two fighting. These are competing. After such a big move to the upside, we've gone sideways, but most people didn't experience it because it was last night. I had a question uh, when we hit this exactly at trough E. Is that it? Was that? Was that? I said, no, no, no. It's too early. You need to get the bears excited. And at this point, they... They didn't even have a chance to get in. So they'd gone in there. Then we had to move up. Now we're getting the test of the two patterns. One is the arch formation, and the other is the V formation. If the T E mini takes out 2063, be careful because if it, that could retest the 2061, 25 level and take it out. Still a little early to have a really big move. I think that's a little later in the day if it's going to happen today. My thinking was we're going to have. A fairly narrow close with the Dow. Tomorrow's the big session. Is isn't going to move much higher. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. And on the upside, at any point in the next 20 minutes, if the E mini at 2064.50 takes out 2067, you'll be seeing a move, a very nice move towards the 2068.50 level. And then you can even try for 2070.75. All right. So that's that. Got our first caller. We've got Mike in Dallas. Mike, how are you? Yeah, this is uh, Mike in Ormond Beach. <laughs> Oh, Mike at Almond Beach. I'm not sure why it says Dallas there, but that uh -oh. must have been a little slow. Whoops. Okay. My, my engineer well, says whoops. Anyway, so, okay. Dad, well, I, I've, got a, I've got a question. I know you talk about Elliott Wave a lot, and yes. I, I don't know that much about it. Uh, I've listened to a couple of technicians explain their views on it and everything. But um, if you look at a real long-term chart of the Dow going back to like 1988, 1987. All right. And you put it on a like a quarterly. Oh, that's a, that. You know, I, I keep meaning to call Trade Station to ask them if they could do that. I don't uh -huh. believe they do that. I think it's monthly. But give me give me okay, one monthly. second here. I'm going to pull up the chart. Okay. The very long term chart. Give me give me a second here. Um, 1920. Uh, 1929 yeah okay but here we go so i'm looking at this chart and I'm, i'll try to emulate what you're talking about okay. because it's easy to it's not always very easy but i i can pretty much see if there's a three month distance between peaks i can call that uh, a peak so i'm going back to 1980 you said so let like me 1980 1987 or 88 okay I oh, this one didn't uh, uh give me a second all right okay. this one's out here we go. So we're looking at, that's 1929. How did that happen? Um, <laughs> out of all these charts, I should have one. No, 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 I don't want to mess with those. Yes, here we go. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go back to 1980 uh, format. And my settings, 10, I'm going back to... 40 years back. Here we go. Bingo. Okay. There we are. And now, yes. So now what have you got? Okay. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> um, like, on, like on the chart that, that I'm looking at, uh, I got one of like big charts and everything. But okay. um, if, you look at, if you look at the Dow on a very long term, going back to 1988, yes. is it possible that that that's a huge Elliott wave formation, and we're in wave five now. And um, uh, I hear them. you know what? That's a that's a great question. It's, I had a whole webinar on that exact thing. In fact, this is not what I want to do. I want to go to the other one, and we'll discuss it. Hey, great question, Mike. Can you hold on? Sure. We'll be back with Mike. Platinum, in grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. 
Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. We're back with Mike and Oman uh, Beach, and we are looking at the the Dow, and it's my interpretation. I have to always say that it's my interpretation of Elliott Wave. I've done a lot of studying of Elliott Wave, and then certain patterns I became very familiar with. But as I became more familiar with the patterns, so I would find I was breaking the strict Elliott Wave rules, and yet it still worked really well based on my own methodology. So, um, so Mike, now yes. you can talk to me because I've got the chart up and I'm okay. in Elliott Wave 4. For me, the way I interpret it, there are right. other interpretations that it could be what's called the B wave. If it goes to a new, the Dow goes to a new high. I don't quite see it that way because it would correspond with my monthly work in the Chapman wave. And all I can say to make it real clear before you, you, you tell me what you're thinking is, is that only at 18,352 will I be starting Elliott Wave 5. Okay, this well, is I'm looking at something much bigger. I'm looking at... I'm looking at wave. I'm looking at a giant <clears throat> Elliott wave that started in 1988. I mean, I, I, I'm. This is my question to you: Is it possible that wave one could have started in 1988 and finished in a you know ballpark in the dates around 2000? Could that possibly be wave one? And then wave two, the retracement 
starting around 2000 and then two, down two, to two thousand and two in March of 2003. Three, uh, yep, two. March of 2002, right? Uh, well, I thought 2003 is when we had the very bottom of the S&P. So you remember or, that the S&P and the Dow would, yeah, if I remember right. correctly, yeah, they, did, they didn't. I'm sorry, 2002. Yeah, 2003 was Maybe March was, like was the uh, was the S&P low. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, like I said, I'm just kind of ballparking the date That's just good. to give the big picture. So now you're then, in two. Then you're wave, in two down, right? You're in two down. Right. And then the beginning of wave three, starting at um, 2002, and going up to 2007, and then wave four, going from 2007 down to March 2009, and then the beginning of Wave 5 starting in March 2009, and, and is it possible that we're still in a giant Wave 5? So I, lo I love your thinking because in Elliott Wave, especially one of the experts that I know, um, loves to take all the different time frames right. and put them together. So you could extrapolate from this. There's just one problem, is that the low at 16,469 for wave three, okay, uh, one, two, three, for wave four, took yeah. out the low of wave two okay, at so 7,197. That, that violates the rule of Elliott Wave then? So you see, this is my thinking here. I have other, other ways of looking at In fact, I'm, I'm working on a whole new thing that is completely different. It doesn't do anything with, with Elliott Wave. Okay. And it happens to do with five waves, but it's something completely different. It's based on my own methodology. Okay. And if that was the case, I'm with you. I love the big picture. I love the fact that this could be a whopping Wave 5 and right. that you're in five already because you've taken out the 14,198 high of October of 2007. Right, so, a giant wave five. So now let's do this. Uh, there's one big problem in that oh, one, two, your wave three completely, both your wave three and wave four violate the uh, Elliott wave. Why? Okay. Because wave three should be at minimum the distance of one, but it really should be even bigger. Okay. Okay, I got you. So, but I, but now yours fits the pattern that I'm looking at here, of a, of three of, of five waves. So I'm with you based on my newest. Well, it's not new because I've been using it for a long time. I like to test things out for months before I even discuss it, and um, this fits into the new criteria that I've got. And it doesn't matter that it violated the low of uh, wave two down. I like your thinking. I like I like the whole structure of your your the concept. And your concept is that could this be just a huge wave five, regardless of whether we pull back sharply. Even now, we could pull back sharply and take out fifteen thousand three seventy. We could even go down to the the the, the fifteen thousand three hundred level. Right. Uh, no, you couldn't. No, that would be too much. But you could go down to the seventeen thousands. Okay, so, and then we could still be in a large, bigger picture wave five. And you know what? It also turns out that that still would be four in the waveform that I've typed up here that you can see, because we're in four right now. If we take out the 15,370 level, that would mean that your wave down in Elliott wave three could essentially be a what we call at TFNN, the lightning bolts, A to B equals C to D. Right. It could even be one of those things, and it could, it could violate that 15,373 level and, and still be in only wave uh, four down, and we're waiting for five. That's the reason I'm saying it's so critical for me to see a new high, all-time high, for a number of reasons. One of them is my Chapman Wave methodology in the monthly. It says you've basically started a new wave uh, to the upside, mm -hmm. which could take you all the way into 2016. And it would then confirm for me the, the pure Elliott wave five of going up. So okay. it, do, do, have I answered your question? Yeah, so pretty much what you're saying is this is a violation of the rules of Elliott wave because yes. wave three needs to be equal to or greater than 
than it, wave all one. All of one, yes. yes. And then the other thing is, too, when we had the low in March of 2009, because we went below the low of 2002, that was a violation? That's a violation, yes. Okay. All right, so, and one other question yes. um, regarding this subject. Can you calculate the projection of wave five once you once you've determined well, twenty one like, like twenty one thousand three hundred and thirty one. I'm sorry. <laughs> twenty one thousand three hundred and thirty one. Okay. But I'm 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 I've 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 actually put it in here, but that's more that's just saying under absolutely ideal conditions, if everything worked out that's what you would get to. I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't even made a new all-time high at right. 18,352. So I'm only going one step at a time. But yeah, that would but be the that would be the projection that I would have. And I, I, I just off the top of my head, the projection, if I remember correctly, is based on the wave one's distance from the low to the high. Just extrapolating that if you've got your perfect Elliott wave and you've got wave three much bigger than wave one. Ideal circumstances often have wave five equal or even greater than one. But I've seen so many cases where it's failed miserably way before in five. Five can be a turn out to be a flat and you get go through a whole new process. That's why Elliott wave is so complicated. Um, I like to stick with the Chapman wave and my, my new interpretation of Elliott wave and that's the way I'm doing it. So hey, good good ideas and I, I, I'm with you in the, the thinking, but it would go more towards my newest waveform projection and not Elliott wave if that okay. was the case. All right, are you gonna are you gonna make a little booklet or something when you get that when you uh, I, you know I'm there's a lot. I, for the first time in a year and a half, I've actually had some free time to start thinking again on wave structure and all sorts of things over the last couple of weeks, and it's been great. I hope to keep doing that into the beginning of January. So uh, maybe I will. Who knows? But thanks for calling, Mike, and have a great New Year. Okay, you too, Basil. Thanks for everything Thank you, you do for Thank you very much. Bye. Yes. Let's go to Robert in Chicago. Hi, Robert. How are you? Hey, Basil. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So, Basil, I just want to go to Proctor for a minute, Proctor and Gamble. And uh, there was a call yesterday, and I believe you mentioned that Proctor is in leg B. Um, can you uh, project it out and, and go through C, D, and E, and F? Can, can is, you project talk, it out? We're talking about the monthly charts, and you know what I like right. to do? The monthly charts is very much uh, dependent on the shorter term. That would be the weekly, and the weekly is uh, based on the daily. So let's do this. Procter & Gamble at 80.36, up a penny. It has been in this phase since the middle of November, actually since even before that, in October. It has been the, uh, it's in the sector, the defensive, not defense like Raytheon, but defensive area like uh, um, Coke and uh, McDonald's and and uh, Procter and & Gamble and Kellogg's, uh, it's in that area that people sometimes drift to. Actually, I shouldn't put McDonald's into that. That was a different category. But um, it's in that category of defensive type stocks. So now let me do this. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to just go backwards. The monthly chart is in a leg A, nicely above the 77.39 level of the nine-period exponential moving average. It really has to break above 82.55, I would even say, this is one of the times where I say not just break, it has to close on a monthly basis above 82.55, and that was the high of July of this year. If it does that, then all of a sudden I'm looking at the chance that the MACD could suddenly begin a move towards crossing positive. It hasn't done that yet, but it raises the base of support, and that's really important. The, okay, and the... And the Support level that we've got to be really focused on is a close below 76 in January. We say, uh-oh, this is going to be one of those, and I'm going to draw it in because I like to draw the two patterns, the fighting patterns. One is the, the, the cup formation. No, sorry, the V-shaped formation. And in this case, there's also a cup. I keep saying a cup. It's an arch formation. And that arch formation says that somewhere uh, b below 82.55, maybe... 8250s or lower, 
you could see a reversal to the downside. I'm saying that's what we've got to be careful of. The V-shaped pattern says, uh-uh, this is a V-shaped pattern, and if you close above 82.55, let's call it 83.20 to say it's nicely above that high that was made in July, you're looking at a potential for a V-shaped pattern that could take you even higher towards the high 80s, and then, we, then we'll be talking about whether or not you're looking at a double top at 93.89. So one step at a time. For anything to happen very positive, the stochastic in the weekly chart at 85% must stay at 85% or higher. The MACD is expanding, and the histogram, those little green bars, are very positive. And that says there's a good chance that by the, in the next two weeks, Proctor should take out 81.23. Well, it's only less than 90 cents away. It should take that out for leg D. But now you get to that left side high of 82.55 that we were talking back back in July. So you can see that we've taken a lot more time. Actually, let me draw this in. It'll be a, a very nice example of a, of a technique that I use. I'm going to go from there, and this time it's a V-shaped pattern. I've already drawn this side here. I'm going to draw in the left side, right side price time match. And that goes from there to there. And the right side would say, double check, that was the low. Yep. The right side would say, uh, new parallel, make it green. And look at this. All of a sudden, what you've got, you've got this trend line has to keep moving up quite sharply. There you are. So this says, by the week of the 29th of January, if Procter & Gamble is able to close above 81.23, that was a high of three weeks ago, it'll be leg D. The next area of resistance would be that 82.55, and if it takes it out, I'm looking at the week of the 29th of January as being a test of the 84.20s. On the downside, I also have no choice but to draw in the arch formation and say the two fighting... Uh, uh, yeah, we have patterns that we're looking at. One is the arch and the other is the V. Vs are sometimes much, much more powerful than cup formations because they take way less time to digest gains and the gains go much sharper to the upside so that you get a, a rising uh, line of support for the base. So in this particular instance, a close below 7730 would make 7670s, the 200 period exponential moving average, really important support. So let me make it clear. I love what's going on. I haven't got to the daily yet, but the weekly chart is suggesting that by next week or two weeks' time, it should take out 81.23, and immediately the 82, what did I say, 55? Yeah, 82.55 will become a magnet on the upside. And if there's a failure, and at 80, it just starts to break 79 support. Be careful, because 77, 70s is your nine. I shouldn't say be careful. I should just say watch 77, 70s. That's your really. That's an important line of support at the nine EMA. So so far, there are far more positives than negatives. Let's go to the daily. The daily had a Chapman wave, a cup and ladle breakout, which takes you to a D before coming back to retest the breakout level of 78.45. 78.45. We took it out. It went to 78.13. And now you've got the pattern that I often talk about. It is the rectangle formation. And that reformation says, if you get a look that says you've got something like a flag pattern that's held support and it's starting to rally, you could have an inside. Let me go to the 120-minute chart. So that's A, B, C. We've already got a D. You could have an inside shorter term rally to the upside that takes you just under exactly to or just over the previous high and that was that high that was made on the uh, at 81.23 on the 16th of December. So I haven't answered your question yet about the projections to the upside as far as uh, the data is concerned. So can you hold on a moment? Sure, Basil. Thanks very much. Okay, we've got Rob from Chicago. I'll be right back. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to Trade Options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. So we're looking at Procter & Gamble, and I, I wanted to give the different parameters. And what I'm really looking at now is, on the upside, if the daily is able, if the daily makes an arch formation instead of going on to leg, is this B, and then should go to even a C, and then a D, right at or just towards or maybe above the previous left side high, the correction that occurs, and I'm going to put it in uh, in the next six, seven, six to seven trading sessions. If uh, Procter & Gamble takes out at any point the low that was made on the 18th at 78.13 level, I'd say you got to be a little bit careful. It's holding well. There's nothing wrong, but it could stall in the rally. My, my thinking right now, it's in the right category, it's in the right group, it's in the right sector, the, the dollar is maybe a little bit towards its advantage. And I think that, Robert, I, I like it, and I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at uh, on, the, on the 10th of, uh, of 13th or 14th of January, we're looking at uh, Procter & Gamble at worst 
in the 79s, but at best in the 82s. And my thinking is it probably will get to the 82s before it gets to the 77s. That's really what I'm, not the 82s. Yeah, the 82s before it gets to the 77s. So that's the way oh. I'm looking at it. And I have to go step by step. But I told you what the, the projection on the upside would be 8256 breaks out and then 82 and that would take you to the 8678 level if uh, the rally continues and so far it's looking quite good a great basil uh thanks for the analysis my pleasure and have a great uh, 2016 call again thanks robert you too bye 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 so i had a question about crude oil let me go back to that what i was saying about crude oil is i don't really see anything yet but i do see the signs that um, and a lot's going to depend on the dollar. I would not be surprised if uh, in the next uh, two weeks, all of a sudden, you'll see a sudden slide to, in the dollar. And that's going to make the 96s to 95s. That support's going to be critical. If 95 uh, support goes, I think that the commodities could have their first decent reactive bounce. And it's unfortunate that it's reactive, meaning it needed the dollar to kick, to kick in for it to move to the upside. But until that happens, I just think we're stuck in a trading range for crude oil. The monthly chart is still horrible. You need to see a fabulous January candle going above 50, actually 51. I don't know if we can do that. But certainly above 43 to, to really start to change that monthly candle a little bit. So far, the weekly candle has had a, not a bad thing. It's a little bit of like a sandwich with a green bar in the middle here. I, all I can say is that I don't see anything yet for crude oil. And I think it's going to take a precipitous decline in the dollar. So, okay, now let's go back to uh, certain things here that I want to look at. So I wanted to do this. I know we haven't got much time. I'm just going to run through it now until we close it. And, of course, I'll be back tomorrow. And stay tuned for great programming here today. And as I go out, I'm going to say, this is the Investors Business Daily Top, um, top 50. I'll do a couple. So you've got Leg C in NTES in the daily chart is making the arch formation it's holding very well the weekly chart is extended but it's still holding very nicely at 181 it's got down two and a half it's got 169 key support in the nine period exponential moving average strong move up in the monthly chart this one looks like this could be one of those that does have quite a pullback but if this is not B, but D in the weekly chart, that's one thing. But if it's only B, and we will only know that maybe by the end of next week, if it takes out 177. So watch it closely. A move into the 188 is a breakout like GE did, same kind of pattern. Uh, XRS. Now, I, XRS is very interesting. Another, uh, NetTease is Chinese. Uh, the second one is Chinese, Chinese provider of K2, K12, K to 12 after school tutoring. And look, it's what happened? It disappeared. Oh, there's the break already. I'll try to continue this tomorrow. I think it's a good, good, good time for, for, for the beginning of next year to look at what's working if the XRS is starting to pull back. We'll do this tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay tuned for all the great programming here at TFNN. And I'll see you tomorrow. Basil Chapman signing off. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.